character. That means that no matter what it is that is going on in your life, no matter how bad it is, your only way back is God. Hallelujah. It is not you on an avoiding church and avoiding telling the word of God and think that you do extra work and do doubles over doubles that will make it is we coming to God that will make the difference. Hallelujah. Your way back always in everything is God. Hallelujah. If you, if you don't remember anything, remember always that our way back is God. Amen. You may have done the worst thing and people are saying all sorts of things. Your only way back, your only way back for redemption is God. Hallelujah. And that's what Job did. He's everything that he hung on. Because you know, at the end of the everything, Job, when he realized that it wasn't God, he was the first, he said, I will shut my mouth. I will put my, my finger on my mouth. I will not say a word. Amen. When God asked him, who is this? That that case we can cancel with what? Ignorance. Hallelujah. So we see in 10. He said what? Then, so in 10, Job is talking to his friends. So they are still going back and forth. Then, should I yet have this comfort? Yea, I will harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare. For I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. Amen. This is Job, Job talking. And what he is trying to tell the, uh, that even in his horror, uh, in his sorrow, he has made up his mind that he will never give up on God. Amen. So I will harden myself in sorrow. Amen. In pain, in suffering, he is going to stay the course. Hallelujah. He said, I will harden myself. Let him not spare. Hallelujah. And then was, I have not, and then said, I have not concealed my words. I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. When you, when you read it in, in the NIV, it actually says, in, in, my, in my pain, in my, in my, in my, the pain that is constant, I have not given up on the words of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's one thing. And I want you to, let's say that these things, because he was so convinced that he has served God. You know that when everything happened, he would, he would never talk about his children, the things that he's lost. It was nothing about that. That, that was not his argument to God. It was that he believed that he has been righteous. He's been living right for God. Hallelujah. That is the only thing that has in it. It is not the things that we have. Amen. The degrees and the money and the how those things don't matter anyway because it gets like that and it's all gone. If you see the story of Job, it was one person, one servant came after the other. Your, your children were having this birthday party and then poop. It was gone. This was happening and then poop. This was happening. It was just an instant and everything was gone. Hallelujah. That means that the things that we have and we have put our hope in, you know, the 401k and the 453 and the 403 and the now, 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 529, all the numbers, you can't put any hope in them. Because last week, when I talked to this, was telling you, when this Colorado Valos came, the stock, the stock uh, market, how many, was it 5% or 12%? 5%. 5%. 5%. If you put it in numbers, it will blow your head off. And if you don't even know when it will end. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. People are going to lose their jobs. Some jobs are going to fold. And all these things. But we're still going to be here. Yeah. We're still going to be here. <laughs> Listen, that is, we're still going to be here. Hallelujah. Amen. But the only thing that will matter is our stand in God. Hallelujah. That is the only thing that is, no matter what you do, choose God. Hallelujah. You know that when Samuel, when he was talking to Saul, he said, what? Far be for me that I stop praying for you. Because it, the, the only way back is God. Amen. God will determine how it all ends. Hallelujah. It, it is not any man. God is the one who will determine how it all ends. Amen. And if you can trust God, that if we, so the, the end of the righteous shall be expected. It shall be peace. Hallelujah. Amen. And our righteousness, it is of God. Amen. Listen, it is God that is doing and working us both to work. Amen. So let's stay the course. Yes, it may not, you know, and that's the funny thing. We give up so easily. Hallelujah. You, you know that the Israelites, when they came to Mount Sinai, when God called them to Mount Sinai, before he called Moses up the mountain to give him the tablets, you know, he called the whole of the Israelites to, to the, uh, the base of the mountain and he spoke to them. And they begged that God should not speak to them again. But uh, that this time he should talk to Moses and then Moses talk to them. 
And Bible said they had celebration. They saw the, 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 the feet of the, the, the base of the mountain were highlighted. They saw the, the, the glory of God. And then Moses went up. After 40 days, he said, As for this Moses, we don't know what has happened to him. 40 days. And they gave up on God. It was, and they said, not that they were away from the mountain, they were at the same mountain where God glorified himself. Where they heard God speak, where they had the celebration with God, and did they had the same month they, they hadn't moved in 40 days. They said, This Moses, we don't know what has happened to him. So they gave, and, and then they spoke to Aaron, <laughs> the spokesman for uh, he said, Bring the, your, your earrings. And then he, he made a car for them. He said, This is the God. That brought it from Egypt. Can, can you imagine? That's how f- man. You see the way we switch. And not even and it wasn't something or something happening. Not that somebody was coming to fight with them or some of those me. They were just waiting, and they gave up. Can you imagine if somebody was coming to beat them up, fight them? What they would have done? Hallelujah! And then when Moses asked Aaron, "What happened to you? What did they do to you?" He said, I don't know. I just, they asked for it. And I just threw their earrings in the fire. And this is what came out. That's, that's his explanation. And this is what came out. You know, and flimsy excuses. That's how man is. So that's what, you're going to see what Job says, says about us, man. What man is. Man is so, we, are, we can't depend on any man. Amen. Choose God, no matter what it is, choose God. If I don't say anything to, today, if I say this, I'm fine with it. But let's choose God, no matter what the situation is. This may not be working out now, but stick with God. Stick with God, because he's going to do it. And at the end of it all, we all see it and it will be marvelous in our eyes. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. So Job is saying, 11. What do you, he said, what is my strength that I should hope? What is my end that I should prolong my life? What he's trying to, when you read that commentary, he say, he's trying to tell them that if anything at all, he'd rather die holding on to righteousness, believing in God, than hang around and give up his faith. Hallelujah. So he said, what is my strength? What, sh- what, what that I should hope? What is my end that I should prolong my life? If he has to make a choice, he'd rather die in God than prolong his life and let things make it worse for him and that he will give up God. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying in verse 11. That's how important it was for Job. Yeah, in, in, with the source and everything. You know when they first came to see him, for one week they, could, they couldn't talk. When they saw him, for a week, they sat down, they didn't see a word. The suffering that the guy was going through, for a week, they sat around him and they didn't see a word. That's the amount of suffering that the guy was going through. Hallelujah. Let's go to the verse, next verse. Help me out. Next verse. The guy is sleeping. Verse 12. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, all right. He said, it's my strength, the strength of stones. It's my flesh of brass. Hallelujah. He, he, he's trying to tell them, where does he get his strength from? Hallelujah. He, is, he has nothing. Hallelujah. It's, everything that he has, to say anything is in God. Hallelujah. He said, it's my strength, that of stones, or my flesh, that of brass. He, he just telling us how important, how, what God means to him. It is, God is everything to him. Even that thing that he was going through, it was God. Hallelujah. He never said anything about himself. It is all God. And this morning, next verse, that, this morning, next verse, it's not my help in me. It's wisdom driven quiet from me. Here, He's telling, so he's, he's, he's responding to his friends. That they are, the, the friends were accusing him that he's done something wrong. That's why all these things are happening. And he said, why? What are you talking about? Don't I have some kind of wisdom in me? Eh? That if I've done something wrong, yeah, then maybe it's true. But I'm saying that I have done nothing wrong. Hallelujah. He said, why, why would I hide it? Because we are dealing with God. He knows all things. Everything is naked before God. You can't hide it from him. Amen. So he's telling them, listen. There's something in me. At least I know that if I do wrong, that's fine. But I know I've done nothing wrong. And you can keep, keep accusing me. Look at the 14. That's the interesting part of the 14. He said, what? to him that is afflicted, pity should be showed from his friend. If you are going through something bad, at least your good friends should show some pity. Should, they should show some, you know, 
You may have done it wrong, but at least you are going through something distressful. So they should consolation. But he forsaken the fear. He said, that you people, you are forsaking the fear of the Lord. You are actually accusing me. If anything at all, at least fear God and show some consolation. Hallelujah. He said, his friends, he said, to him that is afflicted should be shown mercy, some kind of mercy from his friends. That is what man is. Hallelujah. The one that you go to church with. He said, the one that I walk to, the psalmist. He said, my boss, some friend, the one that I go back and forth to, the one that I ate with, he's the same person that betrayed me. Amen. You know that uh, the, um, you know when Nebuchadnezzar had the dreams and the magicians could not um, interpret it. He wanted to kill all of them. He, he wanted to kill all of them. And he went to talk to Daniel. And Daniel came to save them. When he raised that uh, um, golden image and the three, they, they, they didn't uh, bow. This same magicians were the poor went to report them. <laughs> the first that said, <laughs> these same magicians, when you read the story, it's interesting. These same people were the poor one type because there are these three people who will not bow to your image. You can't trust any man. Hallelujah. Yeah. You cannot. Listen, when things get tough, that's where you know where the allegiance is. Hallelujah. A man will switch like that, like a, a switch. He will go off and on. Just like that. There's, not, there's no middle speed, there's no gear. It's off or you're on. That's what man will do to you. Hallelujah. Let's go to the verse 15. He said, My brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook, as the stream of brooks that pass away. So, what he's saying here is that, you know, the brook is supposed to be a place where there's water, you know, so that at least if you need water, you can go there and go. But he's still like, they're like a stream. They don't stay, they, are, they keep moving. So, when you go through for water, they are not there, they are already gone. Hallelujah. You can't depend on them. It's not something like you can say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm struggling, so I go here. Yeah, like you put money in them. No, the money is not there. He said, what? They have dealt deceitfully. He trusts, because even when he was prospering, these were his bosom friends. This is a people that he knew that he could depend on. None that he was going to hell. The people that he said he could, they are the same people who are accusing him. And it was one after the other. Like, this all come in and this all come in. This all come in, so non stop. He said, they have dealt deceitfully as they broke, and as the stream of brooks, they pass away. Hallelujah. Go to the next verse. I'm going to show you, you're going to put it together. He said, which are blackish by reason of the eyes, wherein the snow hits. So what he said now, in, in winter, because you are supposed to survive. Hallelujah. Here we survive. In winter, we turn the heat on. You know, when the heat, in this winter, we turn the heat on. So at least you can live. Hallelujah. We drink water, we do it. He's trying to tell them what, in winter, the water that they are supposed to provide is hidden in snow. It's no more available. So man cannot be available for you all the time. Hallelujah. When the seasons change, they also change. You see, in winter, they are hidden in the snow. They are no more available. They become ice. You need water, you get ice. Amen. That is what a man will do to you. Man will change you the seasons. Man, but God is the same yesterday, today, Hallelujah. Amen. So choose God. Hallelujah. He said, and then go to um, 17. Look at the 17. He said, by it, uh, what time they wax form? Say, in the summer, and at least say, okay, now there's heat. So the, the water is going to melt. The heat will dry the water. There will be no more water. So in winter, you cannot get there because they are frozen. In summer, you say, oh, okay, there's heat is here. The good news. But the heat evaporates all the water. Now you don't have anything. Amen. The ones from they vanish. When it is what they are consuming out of place, you go, there's nothing there. That is man. Man, you cannot depend on man. Hallelujah. They will freeze in winter and in summer they will disappear on you. Hallelujah. And then look at 18. So see the, 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 the paths of their way are turned aside and they go to nothing and perish. Because there's nothing there. Man has nothing for you. Hallelujah. Man has nothing for you. So don't depend on man. Hallelujah. Go to the next verse. So he, he just, so what people, they the truth of Tema, he said all, all these caravans, they all, go to the next verse. I'll, I'll just, I think so. Yeah. Come to seven, you seven. That's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> that's my house address. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, they're the twist of Teba. So Gala is in the Bible. You would know Gala is in the Bible. That's where I come from. <laughs> he said, the companies of Sheba waited for them. Go to the next verse. And they were confounded because they had hoped. They came here, but we were ashamed. Amen. This boy, they knew that, oh, here there's water because they know, oh, that there's water here. They got there and they were ashamed. Amen. They had hoped, but when they got there, they were ashamed. Go to the next verse. For now ye are nothing. You see man casting down and afraid. Amen. See, ye, you are nothing. You are not. Ye, ye, they are not helping him. They are seeing what's going on and they are scared and they are seeing all sorts of things that they're not supposed to say. Amen. That is what man will do to you. When it they, when they gets tough, they disappear. Either they get scared and run away or they just make it worse for you. Hallelujah. We... When we were coming on Friday, next verse. When we were coming on Friday, we were something on the, on the radio. Say a friend came out from a shop and saw that one of his one of her friends. In fact, he had a friend, and when he came out to the shop, he saw that two people had jumped her friend and they were beating her up. So she rushed to go and fight, you know, help his friend, and his friend ran, ran away. He left him alone. <laughs> so they are asking, can this friendship stand? That was the question on the radio. <laughs> eh? I came to help you. You ran away. <laughs> eh? <Yeah>, help. <laughs> Amen. So it tells us that what we cannot trust man. Hallelujah. We cannot trust man. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Job talking. I like Job because all these things, it just tells you how frail we are. Amen. He said, where's my strength? Is this in stones? Is my flesh like brass? No. The only thing that he had to hold on was God. Hallelujah. He said, what? I will, st- I will hide myself in my sorrow. What you are going through, please, stay the course. Hallelujah. Listen, it may not look as if God is in there. It, anything is happening. Eh? He, you may not see it, but he's working. You may not see it, but he's working. You may not know it. You may not feel it. it nothing, nothing means, but stay the course because God is working. Amen. If you love him, if you have set your love upon him, I promise you that he is working on your case. Hallelujah. And at the appointed time, Bible says he will set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. The people that came. No, Bible says only, only, only you seek God. God will make peace. The stones of the field will be at peace with you. Hallelujah. Your enemies will be at peace with you. Hallelujah. It may not seem as if anything is happening right now, but stay the course because God is on your case. Hallelujah. God is on your case. Hallelujah. When times get tough, that is where you know how, listen, things are going to get worse. I, this world, that's the word the word of God says. It's not me saying it, it's the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at something. In, when it gets tough, what we do? Deuteronomy 28.53 Deuteronomy 28.53 So when you read the stories, when you read this is when the kings went to lay siege against Israel. Hallelujah. So, it, it, there was so much pressure from the outside. There was no way out. Hallelujah. And I'm saying what? Thou shalt eat the fruit of their own body. Amen. The flesh of that, when it gets tough, this is what men do. They eat themselves up. Hallelujah. It's so, when you read the verses before, I don't know what time, so I don't know It's so, thou shalt eat the, of the, the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters. The ones that your, your Lord has given you. Because people forget about God. When there's pressure, instead of looking up to God, we are trying to figure it out ourselves. And then the things that we eat it up. Hallelujah. The same thing happens in 2 Kings 6, 28. When, they, when, when there was so much pressure and somebody told the king, I need help. The king said, there's nothing I can do. So they cooked her son. And they ate the son. The next day when he went to say, bring your, your, your son, he has hidden his son. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that is what was And the king said to her, what, what is it? He said, give me that. Because when he read the studies before, they, 
when there was so much pressure, they forgot about God. Hallelujah. And they wanted to go their own way and they started eating their children. The children God had given them. At least if, that was a blessing. Something to let you know that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Instead of looking at that turn to tell them something that we should look up to God, they were eating it. And that is so good. To Things are going to get so tight, so tight, that they're going to require us to say that you believe in the God that you say you believe in. Hallelujah. It's going to be a one on one. It's not going to be like a church like this when it's a group. That one, can, we can all say yes. When it's you one on one, when nobody's there. What do you have to say for yourself? Hallelujah. Can you say like Job that I will harden myself in my sorrow? Choose God. Hallelujah. Choose God. Bible says, we say, last Friday I was talking about uh, Deuteronomy 1, 32, 26 to 32. The, father was, the people went to the promised land. They saw what God had promised them. They took the fruit from the land. They saw how good it was. Hallelujah. And when they brought it to the people, they, they scared their brothers. He said, why are, you be, why are you so unwilling? Why are you rebelling to God, towards God? Why are you going against the word of God? Hallelujah. Why are you the God that carried you like a, son, a father carries his son in the wilderness? The one that went ahead of you and fought by fire during the night and the cloud by day. Why are you becoming so rebellious? That you are going against his word. Hallelujah. Choose God this morning. If not for anything at all, choose God. Hallelujah. When nothing else it seems to be working, please stay the course. Amen. We all have our own foods. There are things in your life that you know that this one day it was only God. Amen. And you have these fruits in your hands. And something's ahead of you. You are asking yourself, can this thing ever happen? Look at those fruits and look up to God. Hallelujah. Remind yourself. That when it was so difficult, God gave me this fruit. He showed me the fruits of the promised land. He said, little by little, little by little, we shall overtake the land. Hallelujah. Because you know that when he does it quickly, you, you, you forget everything. Hallelujah. Little by little, we have to stay the course. Trust in God. Trust in God. Let's stay the course. Things are going to get tough. Let's encourage ourselves. My wife is always asking me, are you okay? I say, please, you're actually stressing me. Oh my God, every day, are you okay? When I'm quiet, are you okay? I, I, she, please, you're just stressing me, leave me alone. She says, oh no, she's just checking on me. Love? I say, I'm okay, please. <laughs> yeah, it's love, but I say, I'm okay, please. <laughs> Every day, when I come, are you okay? If I sigh, are you okay? Oh my God. But I thank God for my wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this morning when we come, somebody was stopping the road. When the thing was green, he stopped. And then when it was red, he moved. I couldn't move. <laughs> he told me that. She told me that. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that you need that calming voice. They're like, it's okay. God is in control. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> so let's look at Isaiah uh, 30 verse 15. In fact, before we go, let's look at uh, Micah 7 5. Micah 7. One last thing about this. What is going to happen? Amen. Is what? Trust ye not in a friend. Put not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of your mouth from here that lieth in thy bosom that is how god is hallelujah he said what don't trust in a friend hallelujah he said if you don't talk to your wife the one that lieth, the, the closest person no no that's why he's trying to tell you how important for you to trust in god hallelujah that, you know so if it tells you that the person is supposed to be one with you bible says for this purpose the two shall become one amen this is what we heard it was, it was, for, it was not for love it was for a purpose. Marriage is for a purpose, not for love. He said, for this purpose, the two shall become one. When you have the purpose, then you have love. Hallelujah. He said, trust not in a friend. Put ye not your confidence in a guide. And then, then, then there's a colon. Just to explain to you what he's trying to tell you. That keep your doors of your mouth shut. 
from her that lieth in thy bosom. That's how important God is trying to the, the separation bone and bone and marrow. Amen. Spirit and soul. There should be no confusion. Hallelujah. He wants you to, he has to be everything. God wants to, he, God has to be everything in your life. Hallelujah. Everybody else is second. No matter what it is, no matter everything else has to be second. God has to be first all the time. All the time. Hallelujah. Trust not in a friend. Amen. Look at Isaiah 31. I'll just read this one. Isaiah 31, 1 to 3. He said, Woe to them that go to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, another seek the Lord. Help me, yeah. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will call, not call back his word. We will arise against the house of the evil doers, against the help of, the, of them that work iniquity. Verse 3. Now the Egyptians, they are men. If you don't know, I'm telling you. The Bible is telling us. The people that you went to for help, he said that they are men. If you don't know who they are, yeah, that money, whatever it is, it's man. Hallelujah. Every, that thing that you think that it's everything to you. Listen, we are not saying that don't have the stocks. They, they are important. Have them. Amen. Have the money. They do, they do everything. But there has to be priority. You have to set them right. Hallelujah. God has to be first in everything. Amen. He said, oh, they are men and not God. This is God talking. So that if, you, if, you, if it's not clear to you, he's trying to remind you. Amen. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. Eh? They are flesh and not spirit. <laughs> when the Lord stretches out his hand, he that is helping you will fall. And the he that is being helped will also fall. And they shall fall together. Ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> eh? Hallelujah. The one that is helping you <laughs> will fall. You two will fall. And the two of you, you say, oh, our horses are swifter. He said, the people who are chasing you, they are swifter than your horses. Who <laughs> is uh, the, the one who is doing me? He's very kabu. He's kabu. I don't hear it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, the, the Egyptians are men. The, you go to Egypt for help. Hallelujah. God is saying that what those people are men. They are not God. They are horses. They, as many as they are, they are flesh and not spirit. Amen. When God stretches out his hand, the one that help is helping you will fall. And you also, who is being helped, will fall. And the two of you, you will fail together. So let's choose God. Because he has the final say. He has the final say. He has the final say. It may not look like it, but I want you to know that God has the final say. Hallelujah. He has the final say. Sometimes it's in his mercy. He just is like, as if he's not reacting. But he's giving you all the room. For you to come back to him hallelujah he wants to he wants you back hallelujah he wants to draw you onto himself so no matter where you are in the journey it's never too late to turn around and come back because he's waiting for his prodigal son hallelujah Amen. all right so let's look at um, yeah Deuteronomy 32 32 verse 30 so that's where the verse But all, all, all this thing comes down to us. This one, these things. Last Friday, I said it again. That prayer is so important. Amen. We need to pray for these things to take root in us. Hallelujah. Dr. J.C. emphasizes the word of God. Contest and all those things. And it's so important because you have to have contest. When you get the word of God, then you have to stand in the place of prayer. And with that word of God, you go back. It's what to carry the, your words and come back to me. Hallelujah. Let's carry the word that we have read and studied and go back to God with the words that we have read. Hallelujah. And let God cause these words to work in us. Ancient words, they have to impact our lives. They have to, this reading is not enough. They have to impact our lives. Because the Bible, the Bible, we already Bible study in Ghana. We do uh, is it Bible, uh, was it um, Biki? Uh, Bible knowledge. You know, without a tenant, you could read the Bible and then you give somebody to read it to you. And when they are reading, you say, hey, stop, stop, you left this word out. So 
you read a thing to the point that when he misses a word reading the Bible, you can say, hey, stop, you left this word out. That's how, true and Paul, they hit you, you start talking. They change it, you forget everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's what they, it's what, how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except the rock has sold them and the Lord has shut them up. Hallelujah. Amen. How, how can you do those? He's trying to tell us, how can you chase with the one who chased a thousand and two who put ten thousand to flight unless the rock, God has sold them. God has given them up. Unless God has given them up, there's nothing that you can do. Hallelujah. So you quote this verse and you say all these things. You t- no. Unless God has given them up, there's nothing that you can do to change the situation. Hallelujah. So let's carry our words and let's go to God. And when God has favor upon you, the stones of the field will be at peace with you. Amen. Your enemies, they will be at peace with you. Amen. They will carry your children for you. Hallelujah. How can you do this? How can one chase a thousand and two put to fly ten thousand unless God, the rock, their rock is not like our rock. Hallelujah. Verse 31. For their rock is not like our rock. If they are our enemies themselves being justice. Amen. That are, that even our enemies, they acknowledge that fact that they are rock is not like our rock. Other uh, versions say that. For Jesus said being judges. So t- their rock is not like our rock. If you don't know, I'm just reminding you. He said, their rock is not, they are our enemies. The people that you are afraid of, that they are going to take you down. They acknowledge. You know that any time Jesus Christ cast out the demons, they say that what? You are the son of God. They knew who he was. But we, we don't even know. He came for us and we don't even know who he is. But the people who are doing us, they know who he is. So that should be an encouragement that we have something good. Let's hold on to it. Hallelujah. Jesus God. Morning, afternoon, noon, and midnight. Stay with God. Hallelujah. The psalmist said in Psalm 5 verse 3, Psalm 5 verse 3, that every morning you will hear my voice. He said, thou shalt hear me in the morning. O Lord, in the morning I will direct my prayer unto thee and I will look up. Amen every morning so come on the prayer line let's do it together hallelujah sometimes a lord you, you, you can't do it so we say there's a prayer line you come you hear somebody praying maybe that will help you encourage you to pray too hallelujah because you, you're starting the day you don't know what's in store for you during the day amen but we are crying unto god every morning so that god will protect us and keep us this may be evil there may be evil coming your way that day but if you pray to him he will protect you and keep you through that day. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to go to the river because he said, when you go through it, I will be with you. Amen. Sometimes you have to go to something. You have to go through the fire. It's not always that he prevents you from going through the fire, but sometimes you go through the fire. Amen. But he will be with you in the fire. Hallelujah. So it's early in the morning. And then let's look at Galatians 1.16. Galatians 1.16. Paul. This was Paul. When he, the, so it's what, when he, he, he got the revelation, when Jesus Christ met him on the road and there was the, com, the, the, the conversion and everything, you know, right there he decided that it was God's way. Hallelujah. He said, uh, look at it, let's finish by 15 and now come 15 quickly. So that we, and, he, and when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, 16. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden. Immediately I confess not with flesh and blood. Not what with flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Not that he didn't need a man, but he knew the way forward was God. Hallelujah. Bible said, right, when you go to verse 7, this is what, right there he made his way to Arabia. That was the wilderness. It was in the wilderness experience. That's when everything is stripped off. The things that you think that help you, all those things will be stripped off. Hallelujah. 
they'll be stripped of god will build you up it is going to be only god amen god feeding you god feeding you get a feeding on god hallelujah let the word of god feed fill you up the spirit of god brood over you hallelujah so when you stand up you don't need what's what when you read the verses that follow is what the people in the Jews, they, heard, they, they didn't know him, but they heard that the person who was persecuted them some time ago is now preaching the word of God and they glorify God for that. Hallelujah. He said, as soon as, yeah, he said, as, soon as I, I settled it in my spirit that it is God that has called me to do this work, I confess not with spirit, a flesh and blood. Amen. First of all, it was God first. Hallelujah. He did not confer with flesh and blood. It doesn't mean that he didn't, you know, sometimes you need advice of a man. Hallelujah. God, God can speak to a man, to you. Hallelujah. But let's know that it's always God first. Hallelujah. If you have to make that decision, go to God first. Let God be the first person. Amen. He told Simon by Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Hallelujah. But when it comes from God, you know it will stand. Amen. Because it's upon that revelation, I will build my church. Amen. Upon that, God, God gives you, sometimes he gives it to you alone. And you are convinced beyond any shadow of doubt that this is God. That you don't care about anything else. Amen. He did not confer with flesh and blood. Amen. I'm, hallelujah. Amen. So I have two more verses and then we'll just close. Hallelujah. Let's look at Second Chronicles 32, 17. And he wrote letters to real, yeah. And he wrote also letters. So this was a king. He, I'm sure you know this story. The king that came against Israel when Ezekiel was king. What was his name? Uh -huh. And he was doing things to them. I mean, he was seeing things. People were shaking. They were and they were shaking. And he, he, said he wrote letters to on the Lord God of Israel and to speak against saying, as the God of the nations, so, you know, the gods of the other, he said, they are gods, they are not like our God. Hallelujah. He, he didn't know, so he's just talking. He said, as the, of the other nations have not delivered their people out of their hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of my hand. Hallelujah. But this is when he says it, if you don't know the God that you have, as soon as you read it, me who? Hallelujah. Look at the next verse. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jewish speech unto the people of Israel that were on the wall. Not what? I've, did I get it right? Which one? Is it Second Chronicles or First Chronicles? I think I got the verse wrong. What I want is, um, um, he spoke to them and said that the, the same chapter, but I, I, it's verse 8 or 6, 6, put up, let me see. Second Chronicles, yeah, 32, is, uh, I know it's 32. Or 6. No, go to the next verse. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. So it's seven and eight. I made, I made it seventeen. It was seven, seven, seven. Eight. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, nor dismayed, for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there's more with us than with them. Hallelujah. There is more with us than with them. Hallelujah. There is more with you than with them. Hallelujah. Yeah, it, it may be tight. They have laid siege. You can't go out of your house. They siege. But he's trying to tell them what there is more with us. Elisha told his son of God, open his eyes so that he will see. And when you open, he said, Oh, okay, now I understand why you are so calm. Amen. Amen. See, there is more with you and me than with them. Amen. It may not look at it, it may not seem like it. But that is the word of God. And then look at the next verse. He said, with him is the arm of flesh. The Egyptians, they are men. Their horses, they are like flesh. They are not spirit and they are not God. Hallelujah. So, 
but with us is the Lord God to help us to fight our battles. And the people themselves rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, the king of Judah. Hallelujah. Rest yourselves upon the word of God. Amen. Because the one that is with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Hallelujah. But with them is the arm of flesh. And Bible still cursed. Cursed is anyone that has put his trust or hope in the arm of flesh. Amen. Because when God stretches his hand, the one that is helping will fall. And the one that is going for help will also fall. And the bush shall perish. Hallelujah. So finally, I want to read his, um, Hosea 40. And there's another chapter to them beginning to love. Hosea. Very interesting. So before I read this one, let's look at Hosea 2.5 so that you understand, you get a picture of what is it. Ephraim, one of the people that is very rebellious. I mean, they did everything that you can think about. God will bring them, they go back. They did everything. You see, for their mother had played the harlot. She conceived them. She that conceived them had done shamefully. She said, I will go after my lovers. That was when she was even in trouble, when things were going against her. She said, I will still go after my lovers. That gave me my bread and my water and my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So this, even when it was bad for, this is how the set he, she was in a way, even when it was bad, she was still doing it. Hallelujah. But then God was gracious. At the point, he, he hid himself from them and he worked on them. He kept pushing them. And then look at the verse 14, verse 18. Uh, chapter 14, verse 8. Where are, chapter 14, verse 8. This is Ephraim now talking. He said, Ephraim shall say, what have I to do anymore with idols? Hallelujah. When you experience God, when you experience God, when you choose God, and God has done his work inside of you, this is the confessions that you make. Yes. What have I to do anymore with idols? I, the things that have taken the place of God in your life, when you allow God to work in you, and he does what he wants to do inside of you. And there is that oneness. Amen. That we are hid in Christ. We are hid with Christ in God. Then you can say that. Choose God. It's what, what have I to do anymore with idols? I have heard him and observed him. This one it can be both sides. If I'm talking or God's, God's talking. I have heard him. And I have observed it. You have heard God speak to you. You have observed the move of God, the workings of God in your life. Amen. And then you are saying that I am like a green fair tree. This song can be, I will explain one of the, I'm like a green fair tree. For me is thy fruit found. Amen. God is saying, in me is your, God, your fruit. Hallelujah. It is not in anything. In me. I wish I could get another, another, um, another translation. Dr. JC, help me out. Let me, let me. Hosea 14. It's 8. Okay. Oh, I have. I think I should have it here. Yo, okay, so I have the NIV. NIV says that what? Yeah, so they said, Your fruitfulness comes from me. Hallelujah. Let me see what the N19 says here. I'm not like this one. I had one, I've forgotten what it was. Okay, it's ESV. Okay, but I'll just leave it here. But he says, your fruit is for me. But what he's trying to explain here is this. So I've sent the first line. There, he said, I have heard him and I've observed him. I'm like a green fair tree. The fair tree, they say it is always green. It doesn't matter whether it's winter or summer. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether it's winter or summer. It is always green. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell me what, which, which man is always green. Tell me. Job told us what it meant. That in, in winter, man freezes like ice, snow. You can't get it. Hallelujah. In summer, when there's water, he dries away when there's heat. When the pressure is on, he disappears. So tell me what we have talked about. What is always green? It doesn't matter the time of the season. It's only God. 
it is only God that is always green. Amen. And it is only God that can always keep you green. Hallelujah. Whether it is winter, summer, fall, whatever you want to call it, it is only God that can keep you green. Hallelujah. And then he says that what? From you is my fruit found. You know that the fair tree, it doesn't produce any fruit that is uh, edible to man. But he's saying now what? In, in that tree, you will find fruit. Amen. That means that some miracle is happening here. Amen. Out of nothing, when nothing can come out of it, God is able to work a miracle in that tree that you get the fruit out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The fair tree doesn't produce any, we all know, it doesn't produce any fruit for man. Amen. But he said, I am your fair tree. I am your green tree. Amen. And for me, it's your fruit found. Amen. When the graces of God are working over your life, and he becomes to do his miracles by his spirit, out of that thing, nothing can come out of it. He said, you will find a fruit. Hallelujah. Choose God today. Hallelujah. Choose God today. Amen. Let them say whatever they want to say. Let everything work against you. Choose God today. Because as you choose him and he does his work in you, there will be that converting grace, that converting grace. Amen. That confirming grace. Amen. And that renewing grace in your life. Hallelujah. And out of those things that are dead, that nobody expects anything to come out. Naturally, nobody expects the fair tree or the cypress tree to get any fruit. God said that when I come on the scene, when I am your reason why you live, you will find a fruit out of that tree. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So this morning, before we take the communion, we're going to just yes, you're going to bear your head, bow down your head in your own way and your spirit to God. I'm saying that it doesn't matter where you are.